I would like to introduce Brass Moore, who will talk about why he chose the Sophia Town play. And then we'll go on to talk about the young people that make up the cast of the Sophia Town play. Yeah, evening, everyone. Well, I chose that uh, uh, Sophia Town because it was relevant to our township life. So I thought then, besides that uh, it's a prescribed book for matriculants, so I took that as a challenge to do it. Uh, well, I thought maybe if we're good enough, we'll be able to go and play to school and show the other kids the play. Well, uh, when we started, actually, we had these uh, kids, which were from, uh, Actually, uh, they are sort of, I don't know how to put it, not the ordinary kids. So what I did, I wanted to work with them. From there, I just tried to get all the information about them first. That is their weaknesses and strengths, because some of them are semi-blind, some of them are can't hear, I mean rather, can't hear properly. So what we did, we invited the parents to come and explain actually their journey, the children's journey, so that we should understand. Because at times, if you just start talking and teaching children, and uh, you find that uh, they cannot uh, understand you because you don't know them. So the parents came to our, to Sibiqua and gave us the background. When we started now, we, for instance, but then we had to break it down so that they should understand the way of breaking down the whole dialogue into Zulu, so to Kosa, so that they should understand really what is happening. And then we encourage again for them to find people who can help them with a script at home when they are not to work to read and translate to them the play. And then from there, where we got some people, like some of them had brothers and sisters who were at school, and some of them had their moms, of course, who can explain what is Sophia Town all about. And then we started now working. I found that, you no, know, with the script, actually, it was not difficult in the sense that all what is happening in Sophia Town, the play, happens in the ordinary townships. The behavior of the characters are characters that they, they meet day in and day out. So in order to cast, I felt that they should think of the characters. If there's anybody they know that has got a character that is in Sophia, then they must try and uh, work with that person, do some research, look at how he speaks, how he gets angry and all that. And then from there, all of them came up, came back with the uh, uncles and uh, whoever they got there as a source of reference. So we discussed that with the kids, right? The characters they understood and the play now was in Zulu or Sotho, in fact, depending on the character. So the character analysis just went uh, 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 as far as that. And then from there, we, 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 uh, the script again, like I said, we did it in Zulu or so to wherever a, a person understand uh, a Sophia town can express it in any language that he understands. And then the second stage was that now, how do we move into the dialogue that is in the script? And then of course we started by choosing some excerpts of the characters in the play to be said in English, they translated in English. And then we looked at the script. It took us some time actually to reach a point where most of the kids could uh, express the characters that they, they, they are playing in English. Could I just come in there a moment, please, Brasmo? I'm, I'm just thinking, okay, you're discussing language a lot. And we find that language in this country can be quite a barrier, as, as you've explained. You first had to do it in some 
one's home language and then eventually get to English. Um, is, why did you make that decision to use uh, the first language, the first language before you even tackled the English? It was uh, easier for them to, to, to understand what they were doing because we translated everything. And then of course they had to improvise because now they, they uh, let's take a character like, uh, like we have the person who's very much uh, ill mentally. And then you find that one character there was supposed to play that character and he had a brother who was also of the same. Uh, so he studied the brother. In fact, he knew the brother. It was easier for him now to get into the character in the sense that uh, he is, uh, he knows his brother. And then from there, we took the language that is in the script and gave it to him. So it becomes much easier. They really, it's nothing like cramming actually, or trying to, uh, yeah. They just improvise the times. And then from there, we kept, I kept on pushing them towards the English words in the script. And then it, it worked, but it took some time. So you, you're talking about taking some time. Your rehearsal, period has been very, very children, or the young people, they're not children really, they're young people. In your group, uh, they're about 18 or 19 or even 20 years old, but have a level of reading at grade four or grade six. They have been to schools for mentally disabled children, but these children are very high grade but they left these schools because they were thrown out at 18 because that's the age that they can no longer stay at the school. And they've come to Sabiqua. But you're, you're a very inclusive person. So what was... vision. How do you manage to get these that they are not? This is when we talk about the hand from those who can read and at home again, they went back home to ask their brother and then the, the, the of reading uh, sort of was coming in because they are 18 and, and are late. They left school at grade four. But that inspired them that they, uh, they should try to get them to read. And then, of course, that's what we spoke to the parents too, that we should try and start a program that uh, we can get books for them to read at home and the parents should have them read. The parents were quite uh, happy to hear that. And uh, still, still busy trying to get uh, the books that they can read, which can make them uh, know how to read. Okay, so when we talk about governance and we talk about society, we find that we live in a very fractured society. But one of the offsprings of of this program has been, and you've created a belief in these young people's family that they are worthy and they can achieve. So how have you found this to be, uh, how have you found that these young people have received all this? How have they received it? Yeah, I, I realized that after, I mean, meeting with the parents and the uh, helping the other kids helping as well it was some kind of in fact the kids really appreciated that because really they would they would have liked to, to be like other kids but then due to some reasons our actors they tried to work with them together they were encouraged and as such by all means to know the lines 
not only uh, in Zulu, but uh, even in English. Though the teaching was now, and they could uh, they push them to present the play, like, like uh, the dialogue, then we'd go to the, to the stage now. To the stage, I had to come up with all the rules, the golden rules, like masking, like move, movement, and all this, so that they should try to, to abide by those rules. And uh, again, we had made a big chart there. So when we rehearse, we would, we would always as one. Uh, I, I really love this this thing of working with the parents because they like to see their children, you know, uh, being normal like any other child. And they were quite interested, and we found people. The key is to help them read the script and many other things. So if uh, when we work, we work as a team and all that, then I felt you no know, we're working together where we are now. So I mean it's a lot of hard work. And fortunately for us at Sabiqua, we have dedicated staff members and the project leader who is um Fumile. She's really dedicated to this group and dedicated to her work. So I suppose in a, you could say that we created an environment which was conducive to these young people. Is there anyone who has any questions would like to ask us something? Are there any questions around, Karen? Has anybody got any question? I don't see any in the chat at the moment. Karen? Okay, well, please, if you want to ask questions, just please put that we would like to questions. Well, Sabiqua, I, not I suppose I know in its 32 history, it's possible to run it through a long journey because if you look at the kind of processes that we've gone through, mirrors a, quite a bit of the democratic processes of this country. So we struggled during the struggle years before 94. And then we all thought after 94 that we would be, uh, you know, the gates would open for us because we were the people in the vanguard of, of the struggle with the arts. We toured the world, but it didn't work like that. But nevertheless, we always had a vision, a vision to use the arts for development, to use the arts for building communities and governance. And I think the Sophia Town project is a prime example of that, where young people who were marginalized were brought, are brought in to the fold. And it's marvelous to see their confidence And see the
say, in fact, I, I, I know how to go about the tonic sulfur. So it was easy for me to teach the children the tonic sulfur, the scales, plus near the door. They really enjoyed that. And then from there, we arranged songs like we used to arrange in the 50s. And it was easier for them to understand after knowing how to go about with the scale. So, uh, uh, and then of course we chose something that excites, songs that can excite them, not songs that get that. When I taught them these songs through the tonic sulfur, and it was easier for them to, to be able to, to sing them. But not only had much or into the dealing with young people, the relevance, things them around, mm -hmm. but they don't have much relevance and i think i don't know whether you will agree with me but the play the sapphire town play gave those songs re relevance mm. and meaning to those young people would you agree to that yes i would agree because they actually they were they were surprised to find that, that you no know, in the 50 in the 50s they were in the fourth it was a different kind of thing like uh, the power sign when i'm telling them about the history that they used uh, the african uh, congress was used to use the, the, the thumb and, and the uh, pac used to use a palm for not really enjoying uh, the history of uh, our our people actually uh, before uh, liberation Well, I think the problem is that today many of your young people live in a vacuum. They don't know the history, they don't know the relevance of the history. Fortunately, they take a lot of things for granted. And I say fortunately because um, we would hate to be back in the bad old days. So I think Sophia Town, which is a prescribed work, play for matriculant students, is a good vehicle uh, for young people to get to understand their background and, to, and, and their history, to know where they are. And I think, you know, we, we complain a lot about how uh, um, our government is failing us and our municipalities aren't working properly. But I also think we need a context for all of this. And it seems to me like our young people today just float around and they don't have roots. Uh, and if you don't have the roots, how are you going to ground yourself to fly? For me, that's very, very important. I don't know, Karen, is there anybody who would like to ask a question? Um, nobody's put anything in the chat yet. Okay. So I think we've said a mouthful. <laughs> and uh, should we leave it there, Karen, if there's no one are wanting to ask any questions? Perhaps we can invite people, if they have a question now, to switch on their camera and unmute themselves and ask the question directly. Well, we're waiting. <laughs> okay, so it feels like that is the point of closure. <laughs> um, thank you, everyone. Thank you.
And thank you, Karen. And uh, hopefully we'll all be in a position when this COVID has reduced that you'd all be able to see the play live. And Brass Small has worked on new scenes and you'll be able to see the play live. And it can also fulfill its function that it was set out to do two things, uh, work with learners that have disability and also to take them to the schools so that young people can learn more about other young people and about their history. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.